Greetings sports fans, ASMR Sports. Back with another video here. We've got another uh, old sports related magazine to uh, look through as a kind of a time capsule of sports history. This is Sporting News from September 16th, 1991. Sporting News has been around forever. I, you know, it's funny. I don't, I don't know if they still publish it. I'm guessing they probably do. I've not really seen it evidence of it in the last whatever 10 20 years but that doesn't mean much <clears throat> believe it or not i used to subscribe to this uh back in 1991 um i would have been very young back then but i'm sure there was like some kind of like you know introductory offer that lured me in and probably got me to subscribe for what uh, longer than i would have wanted to uh but <clears throat> i probably figured out a good way to use a lot of it perhaps telling them that i was a kid <laughs> and that i could not be bound to contract uh and so their uh hopes to enforce their inflated subscription uh price after the introduction and introductory uh, introductory offer was uh Invalid. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm hallucinating, but that's what I, that's that's my guess. <laughs> what I probably would have done back then. I was a pretty enterprising young uh, young person. But uh, so yeah, so this is from September. So that's like <coughs> you know, pretty pretty well into the football season for 1991. Um, you know, the very end of the baseball regular season. Um, and uh, we'll see what else we've got. <laughs> Basketball would have been going on as well, right? Uh, so pretty, pretty active time. All right. There's a GMC truck ad. Surprisingly for boxing, Tyson's legal situation embarrasses no one. I think this was probably when Tyson was starting to get into his troubles with, uh, like, sexual assault allegations from, uh, what's her name, Robin Givens, maybe. I'm not sure if that's what this is in reference to, but I'm not going to read it, so we'll have to... Uh, Speculator Jimmy Connors. Connors game in shape at 39. If only he would act his age. <laughs> kind of hard to believe that he played so long. You know, we think it's like such a crazy thing for like Rafael Nadal. Um, and um, and uh, Roger Federer to play, you know, into their mid-30s. Which, in some respects, you know, makes sense because tennis for quite a while has been a very young man's game that it was very difficult to excel at, you know, beyond like 32, um, at least in singles. And here Connors was playing in the late 30s. And I think that um, McEnroe also played pretty late into his life. And boy, that guy still, you know. I've seen him play at like, um, this was quite a while ago, I saw him play, you know, in a, like an exhibition. It was like, it was him versus Pete Sampras, like after Sampras had retired. And uh, and he, man, that guy, <laughs> he's one of those dudes, you, you, you know these dudes, you, you probably played sports with one of these guys. But, you know, just sort of cannot, like, take anything less than completely seriously and has to try like 110 percent which you know to some extent i find um you know uh endearing but you know if you're just some amateur schmuck <laughs> playing pickup football with the local neighborhood kids uh, can, it, it can be a bit much but if you're a professional then i guess that's definitely what you probably should be doing but then again if you're a retired professional maybe not but yeah no um McEnroe is very competitive, and I still think he plays, you know. I, I saw him playing pickleball a couple, maybe like a year ago, actually, and he was, you know, pretty, pretty good at it and taking that very seriously as well. All right, so 
voices of the fan. We got um, some baseball stuff here. There's Jim Leyland back with the Pirates. We probably know him more from the Tigers, if you were not a fan back in these olden days of uh, early 90s. Looks like Andy Van Slyke there. The last shall be the first. Twins turn around. Last year's finish returned to top of the AL West. It's so crazy to think of. Again, this was back when all the teams were in the East or the West. There was no Central like there is now where the, you know, the, the Twins and all the Midwestern teams play. But uh, recall that in 1991, I happen to know, um, just because it was very impactful to <laughs> me as a youngster, uh, in 1991, the Twins won the World Series. So they not only would return to the top of the AL West, they would uh, turn to the top of the entire Major League Baseball in 91, winning their second World Series in like four years, the first being back in 87, which was just an insane year to be a Twins fan. Um, as I was, kind of a cool Nike Air ad with Nolan Ryan and some really old uh, Nike Air trainers, looking very early 90s. Twin sign, uh, Chili Davis, right there, pretty cool. Let's see what's up in the AL East. Pennant watch, Detroit's a surprise, Toronto is not. Just when you think Boston is out of it, they jump back into second place. Unlike the NL West, this division won't be decided with exciting head-to-head -head matchups. Rather, the AL East will be decided in the AL West. That's because the Blue Jays are this team's or are this year's swing team. While six AL East teams play within the division, the Blue Jays will spend September in the West. Wow, that's really weird. I don't remember anything like that, but I was pretty young then really interested in the <laughs> mechanics of these weird uh, division uh, kind of politics or whatever you want to call this. No mention of the Yankees. And I presume they were in last place <laughs> at this point in their uh, lives. Uh, what do we got here? Namco. And then so every or bi-weekly. It was like more than once a month and it seemed like they were coming out all the time. If I'm correct. So it was a pretty good thing. I um, should say on the masthead. Alright, yeah, published weekly. So 52 of these. Well, this has a total of 60 issues. So technically more than uh, once a week, but I'm sure that's just like once a week and then like a, a few special issues for like World Series or something like that. But, you know, again, you, back then you didn't have the internet. You couldn't look up, you know, all the stats you wanted at any time. Um, so if you had like this coming every week, then you got, you know, you were only a week behind. Um, assuming they, you know, ship this pretty timely to their customers. You're only a week behind on, you know, total stats. And, uh, and typically, um, actually, I feel like every, um, every week, like the, your local, listening to these, like, strange noises outside. This car is making noises, but, um, I feel like every week I remember, um, like the local newspaper doing, you know, team by team stats, so I guess you had that too, if you didn't want to, you know, subscribe to this thing, but this has got some, you know, kind of little tidbits on, on each team, so that's kind of fun, and of course I'm going to check out the Yankees to see what they were doing at this time. You guys remember Ramon Martinez, this guy was like super hot commodity back in this time frame, and uh, his rookie cards were, were, were pretty valuable and very sought after. Little, little, little did we know we'd forget all about him some short time later when his brother made it onto the scene. Um, all right, there you go. Pasquale Perez. 
this is the photo. Um, for this, for this, uh, for this Yankees piece. Let's see, dugout chatter Pasquale Perez was unfazed by Major League Baseball's statistical accuracy. Committee decision to limit official no hitters to games of nine innings or more. Perez had a range shortened five inning no hitter for the Expos against the Phillies in 1988, removed from the record books. Well, I did not expect this entire, like, <laughs> freaking section of the Yankees to be about Pasquale Perez, but let's see who, uh, who the, like, team leaders were here. So Don Manley hitting 301, uh, Mel Hall hitting 301, Steve Sachs hitting 299, Matt Noakes hitting 282, Espinosa 261, Randy Velarde 256, Roberto Kelly 249, and then so on down. Nobody doing all that good beyond uh, those top three guys. past. Desmond Howard, he did, you know, make it to the NFL. I don't think 
think he did much. <laughs> Rick Murr. Wasn't he like one of the biggest flops uh, in the NFL? Here's some more names. <clears throat> Over here, Heisman Watch, David Klingler, haven't heard of him. Kevin Casey Weldon, haven't heard of him. Desmond Howard, of course, we heard of him. Carl Pickens, I think I heard of him. Darian Hagen, I've not heard of. Keep an eye on. Shane Matthews to Ty Detmer. I'm pretty sure made it to the NFL. Russell White, Tony Saka, and Matt Rogers. So yeah, a lot of guys that I don't think made it to uh, the NFL mentioned there. Or at least didn't, you know, become really stars at all. And then we got a little bit of hockey action. Mark Messier sounds as if he really means it. He says he is tired of waiting for the Edmonton Oilers to renegotiate his contract from nine hundred sixty-five thousand to two million dollars. So maybe those long-standing rumors of Messier going to the New York Rangers are true. After all, he did go to the Rangers, did he not? I think yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I don't think you'll see me in that uniform again, Messier told Edmonton reporters last Wednesday. I'd say I probably played my last game as an Oiler. Well, it's kind of see how they would publicly say that stuff. I mean, I guess if he really wasn't going to sign with them, then why not? A little bit of tennis action. That's nice. Connor Steele's open spotlight. Spotlight. Aegis Wonder dazzles as Edberg Sellis takes singles championship. Stefan Edberg coached um, Roger Federer for a good number of years and it's going to last a few years. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. As they would say on Nacho Libre. Um, we got sports cards ads, folks. We got sports cards ads all over the place. I might have to zoom in here a little bit so we can share in the action. Um, apologize if you're watching this on a phone because you probably can't see schnitzel of any of this video, but I'll do a little bit better for this one. We got a hobby corner section of the classified ads. Not my friends is what we're after. Hot new items. We got 91 Donruss boxes for 1995. Kind of funny. You can get a 1990 Donruss box for probably about $15 these days. So a lot of these, like it's funny because 91 was kind of like the worst year ever <laughs> in sports cards. Look, looking back on things, I mean the the stuff that's from 91, like 91. Absolute trash. Um, Seventeen ninety-five back then probably sells for less now. Um, just like that Don Russ. Ninety-one score definitely sells for less now. Ninety-one tops is probably the only thing that that maybe sells for a little bit more. Back then, eighteen bucks for a wax box. Probably you would pay twenty bucks for a ninety-one top. That's actually one of my favorite years of. Um, kind of the junk era top stuff is 91 tops because it was a unique set it was like a 40th anniversary of tops baseball cards so they you know did some cool stuff and had some cool photography I, i'm a big fan of it i actually have a um a uh a, a, what do they call it? a vending case of 91 tops that i've been trying to figure out what to do I, i'm thinking about maybe like getting some shrink wrapping material and um and uh shrink shrink wrapping uh bunch of the seal, you know, the boxes that come out of that to sort of, you know, keep them fresh and protected and sort of guaranteed, you know, against tampering for anybody who may want to buy those. I don't know if I'll ever actually do that, but I'm just keeping this case sealed for now. 90, 1990 Donner's Wax Box, 1795. That's probably a $15 box right now, but three, four years ago, that was probably like a, you know, nine, eight dollars. Nine dollars box right there in ninety Don Russ. Um, ninety Fleer also very low dollar product. I'm trying to see, so they got some older stuff. They got eighty seven Don Russ baseball seventy five bucks. Fun. That's crazy. Um, now of course this was sort of, you know, this was the beginning of the end of the junk wax era. Um, but still, you know he. 80 stuff that had rookie cards of Bo Jackson and Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire were, you know, pretty hot stuff. So that $75 price 
reflects a, a very um, hot market for that stuff these days. A box of 87 Don Russ, you know, that's not um, authenticated by Baseball Card Exchange, probably you would see selling for 50 bucks, I would guess. So it is cheaper now than it was back then, <laughs> which I find like kind of amazing because, I mean, it's hard to really make that comparison because that's a lot of inflation that's happened between now and then, but still, it is pretty crazy to think you could pay less now than you would uh, back then for anything. Um, wow, look at this. Oh, these are just sets, but they go all the way back to 1981. But look at this, an 84 Donra set, $420. Wow. Um, that had the Don Manley and Daryl Strawberry rookies, which were both pretty hot commodities back in 91. Um, and 84 Donruss was like kind of the, the, the set to have. And, um, I'll show this again. I've got, I, I just picked up like three of these bad boys. Um, nice unopened boxes of 84 Donruss that I've been wanting to add to my collection for a while, um, back in the, you know, the, um, in the, uh, the, you know, the, 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 uh, pandemic boom of sports cards, those boxes were, you know, over a thousand bucks a piece. Now they're, yeah, you can probably get them for about 750 pretty reliably. Um, you know, if you, if you can find a deal and get them for 700, um, so, Th th those things are just, uh, they, they, there's just not that many of those around, and I think people are incentivized to open them if they have them, because they might think they can get a PSA 10 Mattingly, which has a pretty, you know, high value, uh, but it would, would, would be very hard to get, because there's, you know, not many well-centered cards <laughs> in that product. Um, so I, I just think that's like, again, um, I mean, you see here, back in, 80, in 91, people really valued that. I mean, it's the most valuable set out of any of these. Um, it, it has always been kind of the creme de la creme, I think of certainly of 80s Don Russ stuff and maybe even 80s stuff generally baseball wise. So, you know, anybody who's been who, who collected in that era, I think has a real uh, kind of appreciation for 84 Don Russ. And I just think it's a, a great set to have, um, you know, in an open product. And so I, I any any good deals I can find on those boxes, I'm I'm gonna pick those up, and uh, you know, I hang on to them for a good three, four, five years, and see what happens. And if nothing happens, I I, I would think the worst that would happen would they would go down maybe ten percent in value. And uh, if 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 so, then so be it. I will have enjoyed holding on to them, and uh, you know, having them in my collection for that time period. But I think more likely they'll go up a little bit each year and maybe, maybe a lot, but probably most likely just a little bit each year. Uh, here we have more um, baseball, uh, basketball, football cards. We've got um, um, basketball, hoops, 90 and 91, football, 90 score, 91 pros, and all this is like pretty classic junk era stuff, just totally worthless pretty much, but you know, still, even today, I get fifteen, twenty dollars. Actually, for the ninety hoops, those are like forty, fifty dollars um, per box. So, the baseball stuff is worth less now than it was selling for back then. Basketball, opposite. Football, kind of maybe treading water. Ninety score football boxes are probably about fifteen dollars right now, which is what they were selling for, roughly sixteen dollars back then. Um, hockey wax boxes. By the way, um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a video soon um, on my um, kind of adventures in um, buying and authenticating um, unopened stuff, or one unopened th uh, case that I got um, from eBay, and it was uh, um, a hockey a hockey case, which is why I mention it now. I don't know. I, I just got the results back from uh, Baseball Card Exchange, and I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm very pleased things work out well, so I'll, I'll do a video on that. Although I might do it on my um, 
sports card show channel because I've been wanting to do some more content over there. So heads up, I might be posting over there for those who are interested in sports card content. That is uh, not going to be whispered. All right, look at this. We have a collecting column um, in this one here. I'm going to pro set hockey set here through the roof. The treasure, treasurers of the diamond auction in San Francisco last week set a number of price records topped by the sale of a 1938 Lou Gehrig Road jersey for $220,000. Auction officials said this was the highest price paid for a piece of sports memorabilia that wasn't a baseball card. Other highlights include a record bat price of 52250 for game use Gehrig autographed Louisville Slugger and the sale of a 1951 Bowman Mickey Mantle rookie card for $22,000. That's a pretty crazy price back then. I bet that was like a, you know, near perfect example because even like four or five years ago, you could get, you know, a pretty solid 51 Mickey Mantle Bowman rookie card for, you know, four or $5,000. They're way higher now that that card has exploded. And I, one of my greatest regrets is that I didn't pick one, pick one up because, um, you know, for the longest time, like everybody else, I've wanted a 52 Topps Mantle, but a, that's not his true rookie card. B, um, that one has been significantly more expensive than the 51 Bowman forever and still is. Um, mm -hmm. But I I did, sh I was shopping for 51 Bowmans at, at one point. And, um, you know, they, they were, you know, you get a pretty nice one for four or $5,000. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I, at that point in time, I was just kind of scared away by that um, dollar figure and uh, I didn't get it but did I spend four and five four or five thousand dollars on a bunch of crappy <laughs> unopened boxes you bet your ass I did um, so yeah that was dumb that was dumb all right folks we ended with a cigarette ad. <laughs> Raleigh extras very nice all right, folks, hope you enjoyed that little walk down memory lane with the sporting news from September 16, 1991. I think that's the only sporting news I have in my possession now. Um, even though I was a sub subscriber of this stuff, somehow I got rid of all the other ones. So it's probably the only one it, uh, I'll do, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly had fun checking out a little piece of uh, my own history um, since I you know, would have seen this back in 91 when I was a kid. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Bye.